This is the MX Creative Console by Logitech. So by the end of this video, I wanna make sure that you have a clear idea on whether or not this product is for you. To be honest, when it comes to products like this, I'm a little bit skeptical. Anyone that creates a product that claims to speed up your workflow could do that, but it could also just slow it down, add more steps, and make things more complicating. As the saying goes, if it's not broke, why fix it? So when Logitech reached out to ask me to test this product, I needed to find out for myself. Is it a gimmick or is it a game changer? Let's talk about it. The MX Creative Console is honestly a mix of hardware and software. You can't really have one without the other. It's a creative tool that can be customized on the back end with software, but you get to use it and touch it and interact with it on the hardware. From a build quality standpoint, I'll be straight up, it's not the most premium product that you'll ever touch. But overall, it's solid, the buttons feel good, and the scroll wheel and dial pad feel really smooth. There's no rattles and the buttons don't feel stuck when you press it, so I wouldn't say that it feels cheap by any means, but I would manage your expectations when it comes to the materials and finishes and what to expect when you're taking out of the box. Like for example, when it comes to the build quality, like this holder they have for the keypad, it just feels a little bit like a thrown together afterthought in the sense that it's just not built super sturdy or heavyweight because like when I'm pressing the buttons, it tends to wiggle around a lot. So I wonder if there was a way to kind of like latch it onto the dial pad or the other piece to make it more sturdy. Um, I know it's two separate pieces, but in the configuration that I currently am using it in, it is kind of annoying because it's so lightweight, it kind of moves around as I'm pressing. So small thing, but again, it's built of plastic and can't really expect much from that build. But really what you're paying for when it comes to like this is a software because that's where this product really shines. It's the user interface and the software that Logitech provides that comes with this product, the Creative Console. And honestly, the software is really important because I've bought products in the past where the hardware was like amazing, super excellent, but the mobile app or the UI or software was absolute trash. And it makes me not want to use the hardware when the software is not good. So having good software, good UI, I would say is even more important than having a higher build quality. In the software, it's super easy to change the shortcuts and what the buttons actually do when you press them. It's literally a drag and drop system. They even have things like a search bar. So in, in Premiere Pro, if you want to actually search up a specific feature, you can just use the search tool and then find that kind of effect or tool and then drag it into which button or which keypad shortcut you want it to be configured to. The easiest way to set up the Creative Console, in my opinion, is just to take some time before you actually start dragging and dropping a bunch of things into the software is to just take some time and figure out what apps do you actually use the most? And also which shortcuts within, let's say the Adobe suite, which shortcuts do you use the most often? Like maybe list it out, write it out on like a piece of paper or on a note. And then that way, when you're building out these profiles, you know exactly which shortcuts you need to be looking for. And then you kind of reverse engineer how it fits into the product. A big selling point for Logitech when they launched this was the fact that it is seamlessly integrated with the Adobe Creative Suite. So Premiere Pro, Lightroom, Photoshop, apps such as that, because when you actually take it out of the box and you open one of those apps, there's already presets that they've custom loaded in there. So it's a pretty much like a straight out of the box user experience. It, you can get started very quickly without having to configure too much, which is really nice, especially for those of you like me who I kind of like having a foundation. It's almost like seeing someone else's profile and then from there I can build on top of it. When it's just a blank canvas, sometimes it's overwhelming and then I end up never actually using it. As I've been testing the Creative Console, I would say the most impressive feature or the one that I found to be the most intuitive and fascinating for me in my workflow was the action ring and how it works with dial pad. So the action ring, to show it as an example, I have Premiere Pro open here. It's basically a way to make micro adjustments for things that you would typically use like your mouse for. So I'll press the action ring and it opens up some of these uh, color grading tools. So for example, I have exposure right here. I hover over exposure, spin the dial pad, and now I can make very small detail adjustments on exposure. If I wanna adjust the tint, I can hover over tint and it'll adjust the tint. Not only is this much more intuitive, it makes you know, using these tools way more fun. Sometimes I'm trying to make micro adjustments on color grades 
or even when I'm editing photos and I'll literally type in the number on like the tab over here to see, let's say it's 0 0.8 right now, I would go to like 0 0.3 because it's just annoying to make micro adjustments with a mouse on a slider. So that's why I think the action ring is really cool because it adds a fun intuitive element to your process. And sometimes it's not always about speed and how much faster you can work. What's nice is with the um, keypad, it recognizes which app you have open and then it will change the profiles accordingly. So let's say I go to Premiere now, you'll see on the keypad, it changed to my Premiere shortcuts. If I open Lightroom, you'll see it automatically changed to my Lightroom shortcuts. So it automatically detects which app I have open. So right now I'm looking at my Premiere shortcuts and it's really easy to make changes. So I have two different pages here. You can add an additional page. If I had a third page, now I have a blank canvas to add different shortcuts. Let's say for example, I wanna add a jog shortcut. We go right there and now as you see, it appears on the actual console. Now I go back to my other pages that I've set up. Even what I like too is when you're moving things around, it just kind of swaps them instead of deleting the other one you already set. So let's say I want to have adjustment layer down here and swap it with save. It automatically just swaps the keys. So it's super straightforward. And it also has a search tool here. So let's say the full screen feature wasn't actually right here. So let's delete that. And I know that I press full screen a lot as a hotkey on my keyboard. So I'll go to the search tool, type in full screen. It says toggle full screen, literally drag it and drop it into that top left corner. And now I have a full screen button. So if I go to Premiere and I open it, now if I press full screen, I have full screen window for my desktop. Obviously the same goes for Lightroom. So all the shortcuts and keys are over here and you can find what you like or use the search bar and search for the action and then drag and drop into the profile. With the keypad, you can also add a bunch of shortcuts for your operating system. So for me, I'm on Mac. So things like adjusting volume, toggling the mute and unmute, or when you have music playing, you know, having next song, previous song. I like to even have widgets, like you can add a stopwatch, which you'll see on my second page. So what's cool is when you press the stopwatch button, I can reset it. It's almost like a little timer, but I'll share more of this again in the later part of the video because I do want to share with you how I use each of these pages in my workflow. From a software perspective, you can see how intuitive it is. As you can see here on the bottom, we have the three things we can configure. We have the dial pad, we have the keypad, and then we now have the action ring, which as I told you is one of my favorite features. So now I want to dive into some of the nitty gritty of how I actually use this product in my workflow and how I've customized it to work alongside me in Premiere Pro, Lightroom, and also a couple different things for productivity. So now I have Premiere Pro open and right off the bat, I love the dial pad because we've had the vertical scroll right here is set to the zoom for the timeline, which is nice. Dial pad jogs on the timeline itself so we can move down the timeline. You can actually adjust the speed of this and how much it goes but I really like having this feature because it's really nice to be able to make precise changes on where I'm at in the timeline. Of course, you can just use a mouse and scrub, but oftentimes you'll find that you're using your mouse to point to things. So being able to actually use the dial pad and the vertical zoom is nice because your brain is able to be split now. One is for pointing and one is for secondary actions like zooming and scrolling. Now there's a few keys that I use very frequently in Premiere Pro and that is the selection tool the razor tool, and also the undo tool, because I'm always messing up and I always wanna go Command Z or go back. But oftentimes I'm using Command Z or I'm using Command something. So it's kind of like a two key button because for a lot of the shortcuts, I'm pressing Command plus a key and I also have to move my hand around the keyboard. Whereas when it's on a dial pad, I don't find myself moving my wrist as much. So I've set the select tool to be this button up here. The razor tool is this button to the left. Down here, I actually have the cut tool. So if I'm actually zooming through here, need to cut this clip, I can cut it. But I've also set the undo, that's a mistake, right on my keypad. So everything that I need to use very quickly that I use often, especially when I'm making videos, is all at like a one, what, what do you call this? It? Like there's like a couple centimeters here <laughs> instead of like 
having to go all over the keyboard. I'm often using the marking in and out points. So I have here a key for it, marking in, marking out. If I didn't do that, I'd have to use my trackpad typically on the left. And then if I wanna mark in and out, I have to move my hand all the way over here and mark I and mark out, then move my hand back to the left. But here I can just be going like this, jogging the timeline, in, out. It's less wrist travel, which we're getting really geeky here with how much time we're actually saving on that. But when you're editing a video that's very long with a lot of cuts, you can see how those small split seconds can save a lot of time when you're actually editing a video. On the second page, I've set a few action items to adjust the transform of the video clip. So for example, when I hit scale, it works in unison with the dial pad. So now that scale is on, I can actually scale the image, right? Which is really nice for reframing. I've also set the X and Y axis. So if I go X, now it uses that dial pad to go left and right. Y axis, dial pad to go up and down. It's just really intuitive to be able to toggle these things on and off and then use the keypad and dial pad together. I also edit photos in Lightroom. As you see here, I have Lightroom open and I use the keypad and dial pad to speed up my workflow a little bit and also make the whole process a bit more intuitive. So I have a photo right here and I've set the transform features on the keypad. So let's say I wanna do scale, same thing as like I did in Premiere, I can now scale the image. I can adjust the X and Y axis, which is really nice. I can also crop with the keypad here. As you can see, it also gives me aspect ratios for the crop, which is really nice. Uh, rotate, which is also cool to use the dial pad for the rotate feature. I also do a lot of copy and pasting in Lightroom. Um, once I have an edit, especially if it's from the same gallery, I'll do a lot of copy pasting and then kind of tweaking minor adjustments. So I have this image here. Let's say I like this color and I like to keep it. We'll copy these settings. I'll scroll over to the next image and then I can paste the settings. Super easy, go over, paste the settings. And then if I want to make micro adjustments, let's say to this image, I can press the action ring and things come up to adjust the color. So I have here like tint, I use a scroll wheel to adjust the tint. I have exposure and I have things like shadows. But I found it really convenient to be able to set the keypad to things like the enable profile corrections or an auto upright, because those are things I usually have to dig for and click around. Not that it's again, a ton of work, but being able to just have a one click button to do those things that I typically do on every single photo is really nice. So aside from using the Creative Console alongside some Adobe specific apps, I wanted to figure out, can I use it just for everyday productivity? What's kind of cool is I set this top right to be ChatGPT. So if I press it, ChatGPT will automatically open because I use that fairly frequently. I also have Spotify right here. At a click of a button, it opens. I got Superhuman, which is my email software. And the bottom, I have Premiere, Lightroom, and Photoshop. So at a click of a button, I can open all these apps that I'm constantly using. On the second page, you'll see that I've set it kind of almost like my productivity focus mode. So what's cool is I've set Spotify because I'm usually always listening to music. So if I click it, Spotify will open right up, which is really nice. And on the top right of the keypad, I've set a stopwatch. So if I press this button, a timer will start. So if I'm trying to have a focus session for like 20 minutes or an hour or whatever, I'll usually start the stopwatch and then I can keep an eye on it. And then top left, I have just the regular clock so I can see what time of day it is. Now on the final page of my keypad, you'll see I have a couple different random ones, but actually this is my YouTube upload day page <laughs> because when I have YouTube videos going live on that day or the days leading up to it, there are like a ton of different like websites and things that I check to check titles, thumbnails, um, make my thumbnails. I need to get a bunch of links. If there's products within the description, I need to go to Amazon and use a couple different resources to pull links. And so what's nice is whenever I'm working on a YouTube video, I've set all these buttons to open the exact web page or the exact application that I need to use to get a YouTube video ready. Let's say I need to quickly pull an Amazon link. I click the Amazon button, Amazon pops up. I need to make a thumbnail. I'll press uh, Canva and Canva will pop up. So again, aside from using this product with Adobe products, 
setting up some of these custom OS specific things or opening links is really nice. Just toggling through these pages, you can actually just use the keypad still and the dial pad alongside some of your other things that you got going on. One of the more subtle things about the Creative Console is that it is made by Logitech and it is part of their MX line. As you know, I'm a big fan of the MX Master 3S mouse. I also use their MX Master keyboard a lot and this is their mechanical mini. They have a few different products within the MX lineup, but they all use the Logi Option software. They all use the same software. So when you open the software, you're able to see your keyboard, your mouse, and your console now, and you can customize all the buttons across all your peripherals. So you can see how from an ecosystem standpoint, this makes it really seamless to integrate all your shortcuts and all your commands and keys across all your Logitech products. At the end of the day, is the Creative Console a gimmick? Is it actually worth $200? Hopefully by now, at this point in the video, you have a good sense of whether or not this will fit into your workflow based off of the things that I've shown you. But here's my own personal last bit on the Creative Console. I would manage your expectations and understand that if you want this tool to be used at its full potential and actually be a game-changing thing that sits on your desk, it is gonna take a little bit of time and a little bit of learning and some tinkering to make it fit into your workflow. But once you actually tweak it to your liking, you use it for an extended period of time, I do think that it can speed up your workflow and overall just make doing some of these things that you're used to doing all the time a bit more intuitive and maybe even a bit more fun. One of my biggest wish lists now that I've tried this is I really hope that the team over at Logitech tries their hardest to add way more apps into the actual software itself. But I will say at the time of this video, the marketplace is looking really thin. So Logitech has a lot of work to do if they want to get more creatives using the console outside of the people who use just Ad the Adobe Creative Suite or a few other select apps because there are so many apps out there. So I would imagine it's going to take a while, maybe even a couple years to get this console up to speed with all the apps that creatives are using nowadays. But until that time comes and that library of profiles and apps and plugins is built out in the marketplace, I will say maybe it's not the right time to pull the trigger yet on the Creative Console. Especially if you're not using the Adobe Creative Suite and you're in other apps, I don't know if this is the right product for you. And that's just my honest opinion. I think that it, you should wait and until this is at a better position. But if you do use a lot of the Adobe products and you do want hotkeys and commands for your OS system, this is a great tool for that. No matter what, for the price, 200 bucks, you really can't go wrong. And I wanted to mention this at the very end of the video because I don't want it to be the reason why you go buy this, but they do include a three month free subscription to Adobe Creative Cloud, which in and of itself is worth a lot of money. Now don't go buy a product just because they give you three free months of a software. But if you do use their software, then it's really nice that they kind of cover your cost of three month subscription if you buy this product. It's similar how you know DaVinci offers a license if you buy their cameras, that does sweeten the deal a lot. And so I would say that's kind of something notable to mention. If I had to give the hardware and software ratings, I would say the software right now and how easy it is to use is probably a solid 8.5, maybe even a nine out of 10. In terms of hardware and actual build quality and how excited I am to put it on my desk and the textures and the feeling, it's probably like five out of 10, six out of 10. But I do think that the software is really good and I could see it working very well long-term as a desk peripheral with Logitech continuing to wrinkle out the bugs and adding more plugins and adding more features to it. Well, thanks so much for watching. Again, another video on this channel. We talk about tech and cameras. And honestly, I have a main channel, if you don't know, at Edward Lee, we talk about other things. But this channel, We've been geeking out on some tech and that's kind of what this whole thing is for. So hopefully you enjoyed this one and we'll see you in the next video. Peace.